start it. Today we are going to have a new topic. We are going to talk about something new called position vectors. And also we are going we are going to learn how to get the force vector directed along a line. So if I have a line like this one here, uh, I need to know how I'm going to uh, calculate the force vector along that line. But before that, we need to introduce something new, which is position vector. The position vectors will help us to calculate the force vector, which is directed along a line. So uh, the position vector is very important because it's going to help us to find the force which is directed between two points in space. So last time we introduced how uh, to deal with 3D. We have x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. And if I have point A and point B, if I know the coordinate of point A and the coordinate of the point B, then I, I want to know the force which is directed along that line here. And in order to do that, I need to uh, first get what's so-called position vector. And uh, uh, as the name suggests, I'm going to say that since the name is position vector, that means it's going to depend on the position itself, uh, which means that yeah, the, in order to get the position ve <coughs> vector, I need to know the coordinate of the point A and the coordinate of the point B. And the coordinate of the point A, since we are dealing with 3D, I'm going to have XA and YA and ZA. XA is the uh, distance in X direction, YA is the distance in the Y direction, and ZA is the distance in Z direction. Uh, the same thing uh, goes for the point B. Uh, the point B is going to have coordinates. I'm going to have XB, the coordinates in X, y, uh, YB the coordinates in Y, and ZB the coordinates in Z. So in order to get the position vectors, I need to know the uh, coordinates of the points. And uh, uh, I need two points in order to get the position vector. So position vector is defined as a fixed ve vector that locates a point in a space, let's, see, let's say point 1, relative to another point and assume this point is B. And in order to get the uh, position vector, I need to know the coordinates of the point A and the coordinates of the point B. Uh, uh, in order to understand the coordinates, here I put example. I have point A here and I have point B. I need to know the coordinates for the point A and the coordinates for the point B. And in, in order to uh, define any coordinates, like, like we said that, we need to have the uh, location in X and Y and Z. So in order to define any <laughs> points, in a space, I need to know x and y and z. First, uh, if you can look here, I need to know the coordinates of the point A. In order to do that, first I will start with the value of x. So I'm going to go along the x uh, axis here, and I'm going to see the distance. The distance here is 4. So I'm going to put 4 meter instead of x. Then I'm going to go uh, parallel to the y-axis which is th this distance and this distance here like you can see is equal to and it's important to know that whether the uh, the distance is in the uh, positive uh, direction or the negative direction if the distance was here then uh, the distance is going to be negative but the distance here is positive because we are going in the y-axis so here i have two which is positive so here instead of y I'm going to put 2 meter then I'm going to see the uh, z direction the positive is up and since I'm going to go down that means that this distance here is going to be negative so instead of z I'm going to put minus 6 meter so now I have 4 which is here and it's positive and I have 2 which is here and it's also positive and I have 6 here which is negative. Then also, I'm going to give you another example. Uh, I need to know the coordinate of the point B here. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in the uh, x direction, which is here, and I'm going to measure that distance. 
this distance here equal 4 plus 2 and it's located in the positive x so here i'm going to put 6 instead of x positive 6 then in order to get that point i need to go in the y direction a distance which is 1 and 1 here is going to be negative because it's in the uh, negative direction so here i'm going to put <coughs> minus 1 instead of y and in order to get the point here when i'm going to go parallel to the z direction i'm going to go up not down which means that the value of the uh, z coordinate is going to equal 4 meter this is how we uh, know the coordinates of, of any points in 3d okay and uh, we said that in order to <coughs> In order to deal with the position vector, we need to know the coordinates. Now, uh, uh, we need to have like expression. Remember the vector uh, Cartesian? Uh, the, uh, we, we, we used to have expression for that. Here also we have expression for the position vector. In order to define a position vector, we are going to say that the vector, uh, R vector, is going to equal xA where a is a distance in x followed by the letter i i for the direction plus y a the uh, coordinate in y uh, direction followed by the letter j j show us the direction plus z a z is the coordinate in the uh, z direction and k is the letter to indicates for the direction and if i have uh, uh, a point here a point a here and i have uh, a vector from the origin we know that the uh, coordinates for the origin is 0 comma 0 comma 0 which means that I have uh, 0 in X 0 in Y and 0 in Z and in case that I need to uh, uh, for formulate position vector between the origin and point A in that case the position vectors is going to be expressed as RA equal XA where XA is a distance in X plus ya ya is a distance in y uh, plus za is a distance in z and i need to put i j k in order to show the direction also if i'm going to uh, if i'm going to formulate the uh, position vector for the point b between the origin and the point b in that case i'm going to say that rb is going to equal xbi where xb is a distance in x for the point b y b is the distance for uh, uh, point b in the y direction and z b <laughs> this one should be z b not z c and also i need to put i j k in order to know the direction so this one is easy if i want to formulate a position vector between the origin and any point then i'm going to put the coordinates with the direction and the problem is going to be a little bit difficult if we are going to have a position vector from point A to point B. This times the uh, coordinate is not between the origin and uh, uh, co another coordinate. This time the <coughs> problem is between uh, coordinate B and coordinate A. Uh, in order to do that I need to know the, the coordinates of the point A and the coordinates of the point B. Uh, and then the, uh, I'm going to call the vector vector B A B A it means that the vectors is going to uh, start at B and ends at A that is why we call it R B A so in order to find the uh, position vector B A is going to equal the position vector uh, A minus the position vector B in that case, I'm going to say that the xA is going to be minus xB, followed by the letter I. So I'm going to find the difference between the coordinates in the x direction. So here I have xA and I have xB. I'm going to get the difference. But which one is going to, to, to put it first? Should I put xB or xA? I'm going to put xA, not xB because we start from b towards a so if the position vectors start from b to a then i'm going to get the difference and i'm going to start with x a 
and then of course it should be followed by the letter I to indicate for the direction. The same, the same thing is going to be applicated for, for the Y. Also regarding the, 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 the coordinates in Y, I'm going to get the difference, the difference between YA and YB. Of course, I'm going to start with YA because uh, the, the end point at A. And the same thing for Z. I'm going to say that the, this position ve vectors is going to equal ZA minus ZB and then followed by the letter uh, K to indicate for the Z direction. Then what if that vectors, vector was from A to B? What will happen? In that case, I'm going to get the same thing except that uh, the, the position vector is going to be called RAB because it starts at A and ends at B. And then instead of saying X a minus xb i'm going to say that i have xb minus xa and then followed by the letter i so here if the vectors uh, start from a and ends at b then i'm going to call the uh, position vector r a b and then i'm going to get the difference in x direction i'm going to say xb minus xa i'm going to start with the end and then uh, the beginning so xb minus xa followed by the letter i the same thing is going to be uh, uh, done for the y direction and the z direction. Uh, regarding the RBA, uh, maybe you are going to wonder why we, we said that RB, RA minus RB, not the other way around. <laughs> if, if we are going to apply the uh, uh, parallelogram law or Pythagorean theorem, uh, uh, like we can see here, I have uh, uh, RA and I have RB. Uh, you are going to say that RB plus RBA is going to give us RA. RB plus RBA, it will give us RA. Then if you are going to solve for RBA, you are going to find that RBA is going to equal RA minus RB, which is the formula here. So if you start with B, then you need to subtract RA from RB, not RB from RA. And the position vector, the, the first one here, is directed from, uh, uh, from uh, A to B, uh, from uh, B to A. Uh, this is a mistake here. Uh, I'm going to call it RBA. And it's defined like that, like we discussed here. And please note that RA is the ending point. So RA is the ending point and B is the starting point. So I start with B and finish with the A. Uh, always, uh, always subtract details coordinates from the tip coordinates. Here he is talking about the uh, direction. The direction here is from B, uh, uh, from B to A. So this one is, should be from uh, B to A, not A to B. And remember that always subtract the tail from the tip. Subtract, subtract the tail from the, uh, the head or the tip. Uh, then we are going to move to the second segment of the lecture. How to calculate the force vector directed along a line. So here we have a line. And we need to calculate the uh, force vector along that line here. So in order to do that, I need to use the position vector. And in order to use the position vector, I need to know the coordinates of the point A and the coordinates of the point B. And if the force is directed from A to B, that means the uh, position vector is going to call RAB because we are going to start at A and ends at B. So first we are going to calculate RAB. And like we discussed, RAB is going to equal xb minus xa, xb minus xa, followed by the letter i plus yb minus ya, then followed by the letter j, plus zb minus za, followed by the letter k. So in order to calculate the position vector, I need to, <coughs> to know the coordinates, uh, the coordinates for a and the coordinates for b. Then I need to calculate the unit vector. Remember the unit vector? The unit vector is the vectors over its magnitude. This one is the vector. 
since its vectors and uh, I'm going to calculate its magnitude so in order to calculate the magnitudes I'm going to use the square root of this part square plus that part square plus that part square so in order to calculate the unit vector of AB is going to equal the uh, vector AB this vector here over the its magnitude and here the vector I'm going to put it as it is and here is the magnitude this part square square root of this part square plus this part square plus this part square and we know that the magnitude of the unit vector equal 1 so now I'm going to use the unit vectors in order to change or to move from the position vector into the force vector because the unit vector as long as we are, are going to have the same direction the unit vector is going to be the same so I'm going to use the unit vector in order to move from the position vector into the force vector. We know that the unit vector also equal the force vector over its magnitude. And since they are from A to B, that means I'm going to say that the force vector is going to equal the magnitude of the uh, F multiplied by the unit vector. So the force vector equals force magnitude times the unit vector. So, uh, uh, if, we are, if we are going to put it in steps in order to find any force uh, directed along a line, first I need to find the position vector, Rp. And uh, it means that I need to know the uh, coordinates of the point A and the coordinates of the point B along two points uh, on that line. Then I need to find the unit vector, which is describing the line direction. I'm going to find UAB and UAB is going to equal RAB over its magnitude and then I'm going to multiply the unit vector by the magnitude of the force. This is how we are going to calculate the force vector uh, directed along a line using a position vector. Now we are going to solve example. Before solving the example here, do you have any questions? Started to solve example one. So here we have exa example one here, uh, and here is the drawing for the example. We have an elastic wrapper. So this one is the elastic wrapper. Uh, is attached to points A and B. So we have elastic wrapper, which is attached, attached to point A and point B, as we can see in the figure here. They want us to know the length of that wrapper band and also they want to know the direction measured from A to B we need to know the alpha and beta and gamma like we just mentioned in the previous lecture in order to know the direction of a vector it means that I'm going to uh, calculate alpha and beta and gamma so uh, in order to get the length the length here we know that if we have a vector uh, the length of the vector represents its magnitude. So once I calculate the magnitude for that position vector, it means that I got the uh, length. And then uh, if I have the position vector, if I divide it by its magnitude, then I'm going to get the uh, unit vector. And from the unit vector, easily <coughs> we can calculate alpha and beta and gamma. So let's get started here. We have that figure. Uh, we need to calculate uh, the uh, coordinates of the point A. So in order to calculate the coordinates of the point A, we are going to start from the origin. And then we are going to go parallel to the x-axis to see how much distance that we have uh, go. So here we have one meter. That means x A is going to equal one. Then I, I should go in parallel to y-axis. Here we didn't go any distance in the y-axis, which means that the y, uh, uh, ya is going to equal zero. Then I'm going to go uh, parallel to z-axis here. And uh, like you can see, we went opposite to z, which means that the value is going to equal minus three. So the coordinate of the point A is going to be one in x, zero in y, and minus 3 in Z. I'm going to apply that procedure, <coughs> but this time for the point B. 
for the point B I'm going to start from the origin I'm going to go parallel to the X direction this one here so I'm going into that direction and like you can see this one is positive and this one is negative then the distance in X is going to be minus 2 then I'm going to go parallel to the Y axis this distance here and this distance is going to be positive again because this one is a positive Y and the distance is 2 so I'm going to have 2 minus 2 comma 2 and then I'm going to go parallel to Z direction and the distance here is uh, 3 and it's positive because this one is the positive Z so in order to know the co coordinate I will go from the origin I'm going into X then into Y and then into Z to know the coordinates and the coordinates of the point B is going to be minus 2 because this one is opposite to that direction then I'm going to uh, 2 here this one is positive because it's in the uh, positive y direction and finally I'm going to go 3 which is uh, uh, in the uh, positive part of that direction now the first point uh, we finished with the first point we get the coordinate of the point A we get the coordinate of the point B now I need to know the direction of the force so if you get back here he said that the direction is measured from A to B so that vector is from A to B so we are going to call it uh, R A B because the vectors from A to B this is very important information because if it was from B to A then this formula is going to change now R A equal A B which means that I'm going to uh, subtract A from from B so this one is going to be first and this one is going to be last so uh, xb uh, xb is minus 2 and xa is 1 so so i'm going to have minus 2 minus 1 here yb is 2 and ya is 0 so i'm going to have 2 here i have uh, 3 and i have minus 3 it's going to be equal uh, 3 minus minus 3 so here i have minus 2 which is here then minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 we are going to get minus 3 here we have 2 minus 0 we are going to have 2 here we have 3 minus minus 3 this one is going to be positive which means that the summation here is going to be 6 so we are going to have minus 3 plus 2j plus 6k okay then now we manage to get the position vector from a to b and in order to calculate the length i need to calculate the magnitudes and we know that in order to calculate the magnitudes we are going to say that r magnitude is going to equal square root of that part square plus that part square plus that part square so now we need to calculate the, the uh, length and we say that the lengths represent the magnitude then r is going to equal square root of uh, minus 3 square plus 2 square plus 6 square and the answer came out to be 7 meter so the length of the uh, that uh, uh, rubber band band is going to equal seven <laughs> meter. Now we also ask about the direction. In order to calculate the direction, I need to calculate the unit vector, and the unit vector equal the r vector over its magnitude. The magnitude is seven. Seven. So I'm going to uh, divide uh, all the terms of the uh, vector over seven. I have here three, so it's going to be uh, minus 3 over 7 here I have uh, 2 so I'm going to have 2 over 7 here I have 6 then I'm going to have 6 over the 7k and this one is the unit vector then in order to calculate alpha and beta and gamma we know that alpha is going to equal cosine inverse of minus 3 over 7 and beta is going to equal cosine inverse of 2 over 7 and gamma cosine inverse of 6 over 7 then I will be able to draw the angles for the position vector from A to B. Now I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask about that example. Which part you don't understand about the example? Now we are going to talk about example two. So in example two, it's a little bit uh, difficult than example one. 
this time we need to know the force directed along that cord here so this time uh, we, we just don't want the uh, position vector but we want to get the force vector and we discussed the step in order to calculate the force vector along a line so like you can see here we have a man try to pulse that uh, line or that cord here with a force equal 70 pound so that that man here is going to pull that line with a force equal 70 pound and the 70 pound is going to represent the magnitude of that force along that line <clears throat> the question is represent this force acting on the support a so if he pulls from here that means we are going to have uh, force on the uh, support a at that point so we need to express express the force here in cartesian notation we know the magnitude but we don't know the direction and also we need to determine the direction we need to know alpha and beta and gamma so again uh, to solve that problem we said that we are going to relate the position vector with the force vector first we are going to calculate the position vectors with which is depends on the coordinate of a and coordinate of b then we are going to calculate the unit vector which is the common between the uh, position vector and the force vector then if we get the unit vector <laughs> if we multiply it by the magnitudes which is 70 pound we are going to calculate the uh, force vector then in order to calculate the direction from the unit vector i can calculate alpha and beta and gamma so let's get started here so first i need to know the uh, coordinates of the point a so again i'm going to start from the origin which is zero comma zero comma zero then i'm going to try to go in x direction and i'm going to find out that we didn't move in x direction which means that in x we are going to have zero then i will try to move in y direction to get the a i'm going to figure out that i didn't move any distance in x direction then in y direction then the y is going to equal zero then in order to get the point i need to go only in the z direction which means that uh, i have a value for x direction and that distance here is 30 and it's positive of course because we didn't went down so the coordinate for y is going to uh, be 0 comma 0 comma 30 then what about the uh, coordinate b again i'm going to go from the origin i'm going to go parallel to the x axis and here are going to have 12 and it's going to be positive then I'm going to go parallel to y axis and here we have a distance with, which is 8 and it's negative because we went into the negative direction of y and then I need to go in the z direction and that value is 6 and it's positive because it's up so I'm going to have 12 in x minus 8 in y and 6 in z this is how we can get the uh, coordinates then I need to know uh, uh, the start and the end since the man pulls the uh, cord from here that means uh, the, the force is going to be directed from B to A so we are going to say that the position vector from uh, A uh, from A to B because we are pulling in that direction that means uh, the, the force direction is going to be like that so we are going to move from A to B because the man is going to pull the cord like that then <coughs> since the position vector from a to b we are going to say that we have a position vector from a to b and use that formula here and we are going to say that x b here represent 12 and x a represent 0 then y b represent minus 8 and y a represent 0 z b represent 12 and uh, z uh, z b represent 6 and z a represent 30 so if you do the math you are going to find that r equal 12 minus 8 j minus 24 k okay because uh, here we have 12 minus 0 which is 0 here we have minus 8 minus 0 which is minus 8 and here we are going to have 6 minus 30 which is minus 24 k then 
we are going to calculate the magnitudes because uh, we need to know the unit vectors and also uh, represent the length from A to B. So in order to calculate the magnitude, it's going to equal the square root of 12 square plus minus 8 square uh, plus 24 square. And the answer came out to be 28 foot or feet. Uh, the unit vector is going to equal the position vector over its magnitude. So I'm going to uh, divide uh, 28 over 12 and over 8 and over 24. And this one represent, represent the uh, unit vector. If I want to answer the direction, I can get it from the unit vector because I'm going to say that cosine alpha uh, or alpha is going to equal the cosine inverse of that part and uh, beta is going to equal the cos cosine inverse of that part and gamma is going to equal the cosine inverse of that part. But here uh, I need to know the uh, force along that line. So in order to know the uh, force along that line, I will multiply the magnitude, which is 70 uh, pound, by the unit vector. Then we are going to say that the F vector is going to equal the magnitude multiplied by the unit vector. This one is the unit vector here. I'm going to multiply it by the magnitude. And since this one is magnitude and this one is a vector, I'm going to multiply the magnitude which is with, with the all parts of the vectors. So 70 is going to multiply by that part and by that part and that part. If you multiply 70 by 12 over 24, you are going to get 30. If you multiply 70 by minus 8 over 28, you are going to have 20, minus 20. If you multiply 70 by minus 24 over 28, you are going to have minus 60. So now this is a force along that line. Now we calculate the force along that line here. Then, like I said, if you want to calculate the alpha and beta and gamma, here you have the unit vector. This one is the cosine inverse of 12 over 8 and cosine inverse of minus 8 over 24, 28. And gamma is cosine inverse of minus 24 over uh, 28. And here we have the force directed along the line. And here we have alpha and beta and gamma. Okay, now I will give you the uh, space to ask questions about, about that uh, example. Uh, let's move to the second example, uh, third example. So now we are going to uh, explain how to solve example three. Uh, we have in the homework uh, problem which is similar, it has similar concept to that example, example three. So <coughs> Here we have a uh, roof which is supported by two cables. We have a roof here or a wall which is supported by two cables. We have cable uh, from A to B and we have cable from A to C. Like you can see in the photo here or in the figure. And the cables exert forces. Uh, we have forces FAB and forces FAC. Uh, forces FAB equal 100 Newton and force AC equals uh, 120 Newton. And they are going to uh, apply a force on the hook at A. So we need to know the resultant force at A. So I have a force AB and I have a force AC. I need to know the resultant on the hook A. Uh, this time the problem in, is in 3D, not in 2D. So we need to solve this using Cartesian uh, notation. And uh, you need to remember that the force AB here represents the magnitude only, not the vector. We need to differentiate between the vector and its magnitude. 100 here represents the magnitude. The same thing goes for AC, 120 Newton represent the magnitude. And in order to solve uh, something like that, we need to know the uh, force vector from A to B. Here, he show, us, show us the uh, uh, direction of the force. So we are going to go from A to B. And here we are going to go from A to C. But in order to calculate the vector AB, I need to use the position vector. So in order to calculate uh, FAB, I need first to calculate 
R A B. Then I'm going to use the uh, unit vector in order to move from position vector to force uh, vector. The same thing uh, goes for uh, F A C. First, I need to calculate the position vector from A to C, then convert it to unit vector, and then multiply by the magnitude, and you are going to get your force vector AC. Then the question is, we need to uh, calculate the resultant force. After I got this in a form of a uh, vector, and this one is a form of the vector, uh, remember the previous lecture, I'm going to sum FAB vector plus FAC vectors. I'm going to add the I's together and the yes together and the K's together in order to calculate the result. And then also I can calculate the uh, uh, direction, the alpha and beta and gamma for the result. So in order to solve that problem, first I need to know the uh, coordinates, coordinates at A, B, and C. Sometimes we give the coordinates if the problem is lengthy. So a problem like that maybe is going to be lengthy. So sometimes we give the students the coordinates A, B, and C. And sometimes we don't give them the coordinates. Depends on the difficulty of the exam. So here, <coughs> if, uh, the, if we don't have the coordinates, then we need to get the coordinates by ourselves. So for A, if we're going to start from the origin here, we don't have distance in x, we don't have distance in y, we have only distance in, four, in uh, z. So, so the coordinates are going to be 0, 0, 4. Regarding the b, I have only, uh, if I'm going to go from the origin here, I have only distance in x. So I'm going to have 4, 0 in y, we didn't move in y, we didn't move in z. So, so I'm going to have 4, 0, 0. Regarding the c, I'm going to start from the origin, I'm going to go in x, how much is 4? Then I'm going to go in Y, how much is 2, and then we didn't go in Z, which means that we're going to get 0. So I have coordinate A, I have coordinate B, and I have coordinate C. Then uh, the first step, I need to calculate the position vector from A to B, or you can start from A to C. So we are going to start from A to B. Here we have the arrow. It's clearly that we are going to move from A to B. So we will, we will put the formulas for that. Uh, I'm going to say that, that the coordinate x b minus uh, x a. So 4 minus 0 is going to equal 0. And then I will put the letter i. Then I will move to y direction. Here yeah, 0 minus 0. I'm going to get 0. So I don't need to put j. That is why j is missing. Because we don't have any distance in j. Then I'm going to last part, which is uh, 0 minus 4. I'm going to get minus 4k. So uh, since the vector from A to B, I will uh, subtract the uh, coordinate uh, of A from B. So this one minus that one, this one minus that one, this one minus that one. And the uh, vector came out to be 4i minus 4k. Then in order to know the length of this one, uh, this one here and also in order to calculate the unit vector I need to calculate the magnitudes here are the magnitudes uh, is going to equal the square root of this part square plus that part square and remember here <laughs> we don't have any distance in uh, y and uh, to calculate the uh, unit vector I'm going to divide RAB over its magnitude so here uh, he didn't calculate the unit vector directly because you know the problem is lengthy. So RA, uh, RAB vector RAB over RB magnitude represent the unit vector of AB. And then if you multiply the unit vector by the magnitude, which is 100 here, I'm going to get the uh, force vector AB. So I'm going to multiply 100 by that part and that part. And the force came out to be 70.7i minus 70.7k. And now we calculate only the force vector from A to B. Then I'm going to do the same thing for uh, AC. Now I need to calculate the uh, RAC. Uh, and in order to calculate the RAC, I'm going to uh, get the difference between 4 and 0, 2 and 0, and uh, 0 and 4, followed by I, J, K. 
So in order to calculate RAC, I'm going to say that 4 minus 0, which is 0, followed by the letter I, plus Z, uh, 2 minus 0, uh, here we have 2, J, and then 0 minus 4, and 0 minus 4 is minus 4, followed by the letter K. Now I calculate the position <laughs> vector from A to C. Now I need to calculate the magnitudes, uh, magnitude. Uh, it's going to equal the square root of that part square and that part square and that part square. And the answer, answer came out to be 6. Then I'm going to calculate the uh, unit vector and multiply by uh, the magnitude. So uh, in order to calculate the force uh, vector from A to C, it's going to equal the magnitude, which is 120 Newton, multiplied by the unit vector. The unit vector is RAC, the vector RAC over the magnitude of RAC. Then I'm going to have 120 multiplied by here and here and here, and the answer came out to be uh, 80i plus 40j minus uh, 80k. Now, did I finish the problem? No, I just get the force from A to B and force vector from A to B, which is here. And I got the uh, force vector from A to C, which is here. The, the, the questions here, they want to determine the resultant force. So I need to get the resultant. And in order to calculate the resultant force, I calculate FAB and I calculate FAC. In order to get the resultant, I'm going to sum the uh, uh, I's together and the Y's together and the K's together. Here, uh, I have 70.7 uh, plus 80. Then I'm going to uh, have uh, 151. So this one plus that one. Then here, I don't have uh, J here. I have only J here. So the uh, submission is going to be 40 J. Here I have minus uh, 70.7 and minus 70.8. The answer is going to be minus 151K. So in order to calculate the uh, resultant, like we say, if you have the forces in the Cartesian notation, it's very easy to calculate the resultant. So the resultant is a submission between FAB plus AAC. I'm going to add the I's together, the yes together, and the K's together, like we learned uh, on the previous lecture. And that finished the uh, problem. So uh, it's a lengthy problem. Uh, if you solve this, it means that you totally understand the, the lectures. It uh, has many uh, concepts. So I'm going to stop here. And if you have any questions, regarding that example.